Paul is talking, or the Hebrew writer, some people think that Paul wrote Hebrews, other think Barnabas, whatever. The Hebrew writer says, now may the God of peace, who is the author and giver of peace. Now just that, think about the character of God for a moment. That's the character of God. God is a God of peace. Everybody say, everybody say God is a God of peace. Now, let me say this. If you don't have no peace in your life, that's telling me something that God is not in full control. Or you got some problems that you need to address, some issues you need to confront. Oh, I'm scared everybody to death now, you know. But that's true. You'll never get deliverance until you're willing to confront those issues. Every one of us here tonight should have total peace in their life right now. Total peace. Now, there may be certain things happening in your life. It doesn't mean you're the worst sinner in the world or you're a horrible person if you don't. But you know what I'm talking about. You should have peace in your life more than turbos and troubles and problems. Okay? And you might want to testify tonight how God worked in you because you might have been somebody that worried about everybody, worried about everything. And you can come up here tonight and testify how the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps my heart and mind at rest as I trust in the Lord. Now, that's a real experience. When you let God do that and take all that turmoil and you're thinking about the past and this ain't happening and, oh, I'm not going to make it. Uh, you get rid of all of that stuff. You just live in peace. And, boy, does it bring health to your Life. Amen? All right. Now, let's read on. Now, now, may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace. Well, someone says, well, Bob, I don't, I don't have any peace. Who's the author and giver of peace? Who? God. God. <laughs> Ask, and it shall be given unto thee. So you say, God, I don't have no peace in my life. I'm, I'm, I got this fear about the kids are not going to make it. Uh, I was dealing with a person not too long ago, and the kid was just a kid, full of energy, you know. And the kid had all kind of peace, and the parent was a nervous wreck. Anybody been there? <laughs> we can identify with that. But, you know, I said, now listen, kids... That's the way the kid is now, but as he grows and grows, the next year it's going to be something else that's going to be different. So get your peace, learn to live at peace, let the kid grow, and let him grow normal. He's full of energy, and you're probably feeding him some of this here super uh, soft drink. Anyway, come on in and have a seat. Good to see you. All right, now, so when you read the Scriptures Begin to break him down and see. Now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace. Wow, we could just stop right there and talk about that. Just right there. All right. Who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that seals, ratifies the everlasting agreement, coveted, and test testament. Now, we have to understand that when Christ died, the, the, the new will was put in force. Okay? And so we can draw from that will. Now, let's go to the next verse. There's a lot that I can say there, but that's not what I'm heading for tonight. Now, remember this. May the God of peace, keep that in mind in verse 20, strengthen, complete, and perfect and make you what you are to be. Who's going to make you what you are to be? Right. So you say, God, thank you. You said in your word that you're going to strengthen me, you're going to complete me, you're going to perfect me, and you're going to make, make us what we are to be and equip us with everything good that we may carry out his will. Whoa, what a powerful verse of Scripture. Now, remember faith. Everybody say faith. faith. 
you have to use faith. If you went down to the store and you wanted to uh, buy a gallon of milk, what would you use? Faith? What would you use? Money. You buy the milk with money. But in the spiritual arena, it's faith. Faith is our money. Faith is what we procure things. Faith in God that he will do what he says he will do. What did he say he will do? He said he will complete us, perfect us, and make us what we are to be. And we'll be able to carry out his will. Now, you're directing your faith to God. I, I, I want you to listen. You're directing your faith to God that he's going to perform that in your life. No more just trying and failing. Trying and failing. How many is going down that road besides me? No, see, go on. It's so true. We've tried and failed instead of using our faith in what God said he would do. He's the author and finisher of our faith. I want you to listen to me now. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He started a good work in us, and he will complete that work until the coming of the Lord. Who's going to complete the work in you? My mommy? No, your mommy ain't. She's got issues of her own she's trying to solve. <laughs> no, it's God working in his children, making us willing to do his good will. Now, how many of you understand what I just taught? Two people. Oh, three, four, anybody else? See, if you don't understand what I'm saying, all your life you'll go around the mountain. How many is tired of going around their mountain? <laughs> Stop it. Put your faith in God that he'll do what he says he'll do. Okay? Now, let's finish that. While he himself works in you. Everybody say, God, God. is working in me. in me. Now, I know we've heard this before. God is working on me. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we ought to change that and say, God is working in me. That would be, be better. All right, now, look, look at that. He himself, he himself, your heavenly father, our heavenly father, is working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. I tell you, it's so exciting when you see how God can change a person on the inside out, and then it is manifested in their actions and reactions. How many understand what I just said? You got to comprehend what the teacher is saying. So now your faith, get it off of your teachers, get it off of everybody, and put it on God, and God is going to do it in you and then it is no problem at all to do the will of God none whatsoever how many in here still straining to love people let me see your hands all right being honest honest that's good honest folks rest of us see when God does that work in you you can't help them for loving people because you see Probably the reason that you have a hard time loving them is because you got your eyes on what they do or don't do. Say so you'll grow to a point. You will grow. God will do that work in you. Where you just love people. It sets you free. I just said something. People say, oh, Bob, I want to be free. Start loving people. I mean, after all, while we were yet sinners, Christ proved his love for us by dying for us while we were perfect. Huh? I missed that? Did, did I miss that? Huh? No, I right, thank you. Appreciate it. See, I'm checking to see if you're awake. He died for us while we were rascals. 
running as hard as we could doing our thing. He proved his love for us while we were ugly. Wow. What kind of love is that? Why, John, in 1 John uh, chapter 3, he, he says, What manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should now be called the children of God? We are the children of God. Wow. You know why we love God, don't you? Because he first loved us. See, some people will never be able to love you until you first love them. Did you hear what I just said? Brother Bob, yes. I can't get my husband to love me. Oh, that's simple. Just love him. How many is getting it? Huh? You get what you sow. Oh, I could go. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go that way. Uh, you get what you sow. You sow love, you get love. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. He himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight. Every one of us, every Christian wants to please God. And we put ourselves in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, right down. And how many knows what that, what Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 14, right in there, talks about Paul says I the things that I don't want to do I do the things that excuse me the things that uh, I would I want to do I don't do and that's the life of so many people but did he found a secret Christ in us working in us doing it in us, and we do it. Can you grasp that? Grasp that, because it's going to take faith. If you're, going to, if you're going to grow and mature in God, you've got to let God do the work in you. Okay? Ask questions. Write them down. Give them to me. We'll, we'll talk about it. And you'll know how to overcome the world of flesh and the devil. Look at what it says. Oh, he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ of Asar, to whom be the glory forever and ever to the ages and the ages of Amen. And that's just Paul, that's just a Hebrew writer having a hallelujah time there. You know that, don't you? Okay. Everybody say, God, God. is working. In my husband, to do those things that pleases me. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> no, God working in us. Yes, working in us, and then we can please him. People get so flustrated in the Christian faith. And I've been there. I understand that. It took years for me to learn that God is not dead, that he's alive, that he really lives in me. Everybody say, God lives in me. And if he lives in you, I'm telling you something, he'll work in you. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. Yes, he is active today. His word is active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It will pierce and divide it asunder in your very being. And Christians go to church, and they go to church, they go home, they get so tired of that. And there's nothing, no change in their life because they don't put their faith in God that God's doing something in them. Now, I'm not talking about hell and heaven. If you're saved, you've you got one place to go, and that's heaven. 
We're talking about being conformed into the image of the Son of God. That's God's will for every one of his children. <coughs> Excuse me. Turn to Romans 8. Romans 8, real quick, like, gosh, time going by fast. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, Romans 8, 29, I believe it is, is what we want. Are we there? We're getting there. Mm hmm Let's see, 8. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm Let's look at verse, um, yeah, there you go. For those whom he foreknew. Now, who are those that he foreknew? Who, who are those folks? Anybody in here? Raise your hand. That's us. Of whom he was aware and loved beforehand. Before you were Nothing. He loved you. You weren't even a blimp on the radar screen, and he loved you. Before the foundation of the world, he chose you and me to be his children. Look what it says. Aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, foreordaining them, that's us, to be molded into the image of the devil. Huh? Clean my glasses for me, son. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. You're on the ball. <clears throat> Before, to be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly. Inwardly. Everybody say inwardly. In the new man. His likeness. That we might become the firstborn among many brethren. How many of you know Jesus is our big brother? Well, now you know it. I just told it. It's in the Bible. He's the firstborn among many brethren. Girls, you're a brethren. See, in the spirit arena, there's neither male nor female. How many of you know that? Now you know it. I just told you. It's in the Bible. So you girls, are not, your spirit man is, is not female, neither male nor female. But if it's not male and female, what is it? A nooner? What? Spirit. Well, spirit. Okay. That's good. I'll, I'll go along with that. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll be on safe ground there. We're spirit beings, neither male nor female. That's part of our natural life to reproduction. Wow. I was talking to this person, and I don't put people down, and I've been there, you name it, and I think I've been there. They're talking about they were so caught up in what they were doing, and I was so caught up in what God was doing. <laughs> and we had to get on the right page. And they just said, you know, we're praying here. We're praying for all the preachers. And, and, and that's good. And, 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 and we need to do that. But I'm excited in what God is doing more than what I'm doing. Because if I don't let him do it first, whatever I'm doing ain't going to amount to a whole lot. Are you out there? If he doesn't initiate it, it'd probably just be flesh. See, God's thoughts are not like our thoughts. So when we let God work in us, what is he doing? He is conforming us inwardly into the image of his beloved son. Oh, I just can't wait. I'll start walking on water. Walking on water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We get our glorified body. Mm -mm. All right, Bob, behave yourself. All right, I want to go to another scripture here. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 2, 13. Now, we're talking about faith. We, we want to put faith in what God is doing. What is God doing? God is working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. Everybody say, I'm putting my faith that I'm going to win that trillion-dollar 
Jackpot. Cancel that stuff. No, our faith is in God working in us inwardly and is conforming us into the image of the Son of God. Wow. All right, look at that scripture. And we also, especially... We, uh, we also yeah, especially thank God continuously for this, that when you received the message of God, when you were saved, which you heard from us, that is, from us apostles, you welcomed it, notice, not as the word of mere men, but as it truly is the word of God. The word of God, which is effectively at work in you who believe, exercising it, now we're talking about the Word of God, exercising its superhuman power in those who are heaved to and trust in and rely on it, rely on it. What is it? Huh? The Word. Let's get our minds straight. Putting our faith in a supernatural Word and we are relying on that word, which is right here, the word of God, that we are putting in ourselves every day, and it is effectively working in me and you. It's not words of mere man. It is the word of the living God. God that's effective and will change you from glory to glory by the power of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse somewhere 17, 18, right in there. Wow. You see, we, we can understand why some folks don't get nowhere because their faith is, what is it in? Now, tonight, it's in the Word of God. Tonight, we're going to put our faith in God to do something. And it will manifest in all of our lives, in our families, in our relationship with one another, with our relationship with our neighbors. You won't have to try to love anybody. You'll just love them. You can't help from loving them. You know why? Because love is a fruit of the Spirit. And it's been shed in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So what is God doing? And what is God doing in us? And we're finding out tonight. And it's a powerful word. All right, one more other thing. Let's, uh, let's show you how. Let's go to James 1.21. James 1.21. We'll start there. And then we're going to have some people come up and sort of share with us. And I'll start it off. So be thinking about how the Lord has worked in your life in these last hundred years for some of us. <laughs> all right, are we there? So, all right, so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble, gentle, modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. Now, we're not talking about the spirit here. Now, we're talking about the soul. And what is the soul made of? Emotions, will, intellect. It's the part of us that's not saved yet. So, look at that scripture and memorize it. So get rid of all of the grass in the garden and in a humble, gentle, modest spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. Whew. Powerful. Powerful.
Now, when all of this begins to really work in your life, boy, it, I mean, it creates a lot of joy, a lot of life in you. I mean, it's awesome. You couldn't worry if you wanted to. That's how powerful the Word of God when it's implanted. You know, it's really so simple. How many of you know we're the garden of God? The Bible says that, okay? And I know we got people here that's planted a garden just about every year, but we don't plant gardens around here anymore. But we know the principle. You plant the corn in the earth. Would somebody explain how it grows? <laughs> All you know is sunlight and water, and it grows. What makes it grow? Everybody say, God. What makes the Word of God grow in your heart? God. So simple. So simple. But you got to get your mind off of all this other garbage and start remembering the Word of God. Have your Bible open on the table. These scriptures, read them over and over. And let God just root them in your heart. And then that Word begins to take on roots. And it begins to grow inside and produces. If it's corn, it'll produce corn. I can't remember, but I, I think I saw this on the internet that this guy needed an operation. And somehow a pea, mama used to say, eat your peas, they're good for you. I didn't like peas. But anyway, eat your peas. And they, there was something growing inside of him. Yeah, and taking root. And they operated, and you know what it was? It was a pea planted inside of him, and it took on roots and began to grow. I'm just telling you what I read. <laughs> I, I woke some of you up. I knew that would wake you up. Explain that. I'm not going to try to explain that, you know. You <laughs> the Word of God. Now, some of you are taking... Um, Blood pressure pills, okay? Explain that. How does that work? You don't know, but you know what? You take it every day, and your blood pressure comes down. Hello? It works. Do you make it work? You jump up and down and make it work. Come on, work, 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 work. No, you don't. You just take it. Take the Word of God. Think on it. Meditate on it. It works. It'll calm you down. Bring peace to you. Bring joy to you. But you got to think. Everybody say think. Oh, some of you haven't done that in years. Think. Oh, you have thinked all right till you stink. But start thinking on what is good and honest and noble and upright. Think on the Word of God. Think that the Word that's in you is not just man's mere word, it is the Word of the living God, and it has power. Power to change you from glory to glory. Woo! All right, now who's going to be the first one? Come up now. And say, and, and, okay, come on up. Boy, this is going to be good. Now we got to stop and, and, and look back in our life and, and, and begin to say how the Word of God and God Himself worked in us and brought us to where we are right now. Okay, good. Um, he's helped me to get over my shyness because I was extremely shy and didn't like talking to people. So that would hinder my walk. Okay. That's it. And to trust in him <laughs> with all my heart. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Or anything else in the last 10 years you think God has done? <laughs> <laughs> that is, trust me, that is. That yeah. is to talk actually in front of people, to get up and talk in front yeah. of people. Yes, so that was very you're hard. Tell, you're telling us that you could not do this 10 years ago. I, I would do it, but it was really, it was really I, would work uh, up a, <laughs> I would work up a lot just to do it. All right, how many in here has had that same fear besides me? 
Man, why in the world did God call me to be a preacher? Are you kidding? I can't even pronounce hippopotamus. But you know that, that God did, did that in you and did a work in you. And you know it's God. And that really excites your faith, doesn't it? That builds your faith in that. Okay, anything else? <laughs> you leave it there or what? Okay. All right, you, you're looking good. Okay. All right. Uh, Rachel, did you have your hand up back there? Oh, was you waving the gnats away or something? Um, there's so many things. I don't even know where to start. Well, you'll start. <laughs> um, I'm still a work in progress. But God has brought me a long way. Um, I, one of the biggest things is the perfectionism that I've been dealing with in my life. And I've learned to relax, especially with children and changes in our life. We went through a big job change. And it took me almost two years to get over it. <laughs> but it's it's working and I'm, I'm trying not to live by my circumstances and I'm learning by being here. I have grown. I'm living in faith and I've relaxed. I'm not stressed about it. I'm not worried about it. God's got me. I am not living in fear anymore. I am bolder. I am more courageous. I am going to tell you the truth. <laughs> Um, there's so many things. I can't I temper. Um, I used to, because of my perfectionism, I think wanting everything to be perfect in line, and Charles has to do just this. Because of that, it caused me to have a temper because things weren't lining up just right, and I had to tell you about it. Yeah. Well, sitting here, I have grown in my walk. It's not worth it. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. My house is a lot more relaxed. I'm not going to say not once in a while that temper doesn't flare up. It's rare, but it happens. You know, I don't have complete victory. I'm still a work in progress. But by faith, I have victory. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying I am, a, yeah. I am different. I am hugely different in this past 15 years since I've been married and the 23 yeah. years since I've been here. I am a totally different person. Amen. I do rely on him. Yes. He is my rock. He Amen. is my strength. He is everything to me. He is my best friend. He is my husband. And just being here, I'm blessed. I'm learning. I'm, I want to be in the word. God is good. Amen. God is good. And I hope I radiate that. I try to help people. I try to tell people. <laughs> but he's done a lot. Amen. He has. I could keep going, but That's I need to give somebody else a chance. Okay. <laughs> They, they probably don't. They, they're just praying back there. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Shirley, Shirley's got something to share. She's going through the fire a few more than more than one time. I, I just want to give God thanks because I, I feel like, uh, I, and I mean that literally, I feel like I've gone through the fire and, um, with having a, a sick husband, a sick mama, and living in the house with the husband, taking care of the husband, mm -hmm. who feel like you can be the nurse better than the nurse <laughs> who's supposed to take care of him? Yeah. That's tough. So I can look back 15 years ago, and I know I was a very stressful person, but uh, I know other folks that saw me thought I was functional. They thought I was moving along good, but they didn't know that I, I was... I was stre very stressed, but thank God he saw me through that because I think I allowed God to take the pain, the fear, the hurt, and whatever was hindering me from being the best that I could be to in the situation, yeah. and I had a sense of peace that I can't even explain to you. And that saw me through. And when I finally got relief, my husband left, my mama left. It's like, well, what am I going to do now? How am I going to fill uh, my stressful time? But the Lord allowed me to calm down, focus on the word. I can stay in the word one hour, 
two hours. I have timed myself almost three hours. And I am grateful. But, the, but you know, uh, something uh, sort of stirred my little, my little routine that I had here. I'm babysitting right now. <laughs> And, and it's like, I got to read my word when I can read my word. And so, <laughs> so, but I know that's temporary. I know that's temporary. So I just give God thanks because I can clearly see where he brought me from to where I am now. I have the peace of God in my heart, in my mind. When I walk through my door and lock my door and I'm in for the night, it's me and the Lord and I'm at peace. Oh, I tell you, the God of peace, the God of peace. All right, you can come up, okay. You all know that I was afraid of death when I almost died. But God brought me and let me live for purpose for my wonderful husband and my daughter. And I'm so grateful. I'm not afraid to die since I've been coming here. Because I know God watched me and he loves me. Thank Amen. you. Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So good to see. Okay. Uh, Miranda. Not Miranda. Oh, Landa. My sister in the Lord. Thank you for covering me in love. Yes, sir. We're going to sing? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not with me anyway. <laughs> well, um, God has been amazing within the past 15 years, but totally awesome within the last five years. Um, I actually got kicked out of the heart club, which is amazing. I like that. You know, I had the issue with, um, with the heart, and they were saying one thing, and I'm saying, mm -mm, nope, me and Jesus saying another, and I'm going to stand on Jesus, so I got kicked off the heart club, praise the Lord, um, but uh, God has just been doing some awesome things once I relinquished the title to my mouth. You know, um, I, get, I have been praying about, you know, giving him control of my tongue, which was so quick. Yeah. Woo, Lord, I don't miss it. Um, and also, I, in getting in the word and being at the shield, it really became um, radiantly clear that I didn't have to defend myself. That's right. You know, and when you realize that you don't have to defend yourself, people can say what they want to say, mm -hmm. and if you believe what God says, mm -hmm. it'll go over, right. and you won't get an attitude, and you won't be, you know, feeling condemned. When you feel condemned, it's something that you need to talk to God about. Yeah. You know, and I realized that the hard way. That thing was hard because that mouth would just be like psh, right back at you, you know. But I thank God for allowing uh, me, allowing him to take control of my life in my mouth. And in that, knowing that I don't have to defend myself, mm -hmm. I don't have to answer everything that's everything right. does not require a response that's good that's good and that was amazing mm. discovery yeah. you know but it it helps peace come yeah. for you yeah. you know that's where growth is because you're uh, actually allowing the word of god yeah. to take root in your life and it's working and you're knowing that it doesn't have to be all about you. It doesn't have to be all your way. And I'm the baby of my house. And by the time my siblings were out, it was like, you know, by the time I got in high school, it was like I was an only child. Yeah. You know, so. Um, and was that good? It was good and bad yeah. because yeah. it created a little monster. Oh my goodness. 
you know, um, where I didn't have to share. Okay, oh, that's good. Right. I didn't have to share because it was just me. So, yeah. you know, so I good. didn't have to share right. and I didn't want to share. And yeah. I, <laughs> but praise the Lord, the word is working. And, and when you realize that you don't have to defend yourself, that yeah. stuff flows over to I your know. children. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then you can actually, it's, it's hard to tell a child to do something when you yourself is not doing it. That's true, right. You know, because yeah. they are so smart yeah. and they watch everything you do and how you handle things mm -hmm. is how they're going to handle it. Yeah. What you talk about is what they're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. How you handle a situation is how they're going to handle a situation. Good, good and so when you decide that, okay, you want to tame that little beast that you created, mm -hmm. then if you don't work on you, mm -hmm. That's it's right. going to be totally That's difficult. Right. Right. And I just praise God because I can see him at work in my children. Mm -hmm. And RJ is, he's getting there. He's mm -hmm. getting there. He's a, he's a close one. He's mm -hmm. getting there. But Tika, oh my goodness, it's so amazing. And she calls and she says, Mom, I now got it. I got it. And I'm like, what you got? And here it is. <laughs> it's, it's like 1123. And I'm like trying to shut down. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, what you got? And she was like, well, I sound like you're sleeping. I'm like, mm -mm, nah, I'm awake. OK, what's going on? And so she'll go through what yeah. she's actually found a church up there. And, and it was amazing, the things that she's learning. So just know that it's not all about you. And there are people who are affected by your growth That's right. or lack of growth. That's good. Very good. That's powerful. Good preaching. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Okay. Twenty years ago, twenty years ago, I didn't believe in God. Um, I was going through a lot, so I was wondering how God there could be a God if I was going through those things. Um, so then I ended up becoming a Muslim about fifteen years ago. Um, but I knew something was missing in my life, and I didn't know what it was. And so I made lots of decisions that I have regretted. But God was, I realized God was with me the whole time. And that because of those, I can use the things I've been through to help others. Yeah. And so that's. That's great. Wow. <laughs> now, if you die right now, where would you go? To heaven. Amen. That's yeah. the difference it makes. Yeah. Good. And yeah. you were, how, how long were you a Muslim? Seven years. Seven years. Wow. You think you're clear of all that now pretty mm -hmm. well? That's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay. You're looking My good. I tell you, you I, I, I've been watching you since you've been here. I've seen her grow and mature. You, know. you don't know I watch all this. <laughs> good shepherd. A good shepherd does that. I will tell you, my son, my when he was three, Jonah or Jeter, he was the one who told me to start going to church. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And he would always talk about how he was, he knows what heaven looks like. He would talk to God all the time, even though I never talked about any of this with him. He was always the one Amen. pushing. So, yeah. Well, we appreciate you. Glad you want to God's children <laughs> now. Amen. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. And this will get us to think about, you know, where we've come from, how far God has brought us down the road. And, uh, but just remember, down here is but a short time, but a vapor, you know, but a vapor. And, uh, of course, I know when we're all young, you know, somebody's 55 years old. Man, that's old folk. And then you get 55, then you're not old folk at all. You just, just you're not even got started yet, you know. Uh, we don't have any old folks in here, I don't think. <laughs> we're all young because, you see, when you measure it, when you measure it according to eternity, <laughs> praise God, we got eternity. Boy, it is so exciting to be able to know that one day all that we know here will all be gone, forgotten, and we'll be with the Lord in our resurrected bodies. And that's exciting uh, for me because uh, I always wanted to fly. You know, how many really saw the birds flying? 
You think, how would it be to be up here fly? Well, one day I'm going to experience that. So don't bump into me when I'm flying, now, okay? <laughs> God bless you. Have a good night. Remember, God loves you, and is God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up, and we'll pray for you.